Alright, Jump Fiesta stream again with Konami, so we need more support cards for certain archetypes for the latest booster set, that being Cyberstorm Axis, today with more Constellars or Teller Knight support. They might just call it Constellar Knights at this point. In fact, that's how I'm gonna call it. But anyway, it is nice to see more old archetype support again, and yeah, it was introduced in a hidden arsenal for an archetype, but eventually there was one character who actually played it, because exceed user reasons. But anyway, no more wasting time and let's begin. But first, before we go on to the Constellar Knight cards, we're gonna start off with the Holographic Rare card, which is only OCG only. That being 7 Emperors Sumu Haganatu Tatsuki. I can't pronounce that shit, I'm just gonna ignore that part. It's a level 11 win warrior spirit monster with 3000 attack, 3000 defense. It cannot be special summon, and it can only be tribute summoned by tributing one normal summon monster. And its effect is, if this card is normal summon or flip face up, activate this effect. Your opponent can send any number of cards they control to the graveyard if they do each player draws cards equal to the number of cards. During the end of the turn, shuffle all banish, field, and graveyard cards into the deck. It's not too bad, it's just the normal summon part, but depending on the deck, you could actually run this. Especially on the second effect where we got the spirit part. Once per turn during the end phase, if this card was normal or flip summon during this turn, return this to the hand, which I don't like about spirit monsters. But you mainly use it for the first effect, and you of course for the second effect, you want it back to your hand so you can re-normal summon this card again. So depending on the deck, you can actually play this well. And now to the Constellar Knight cards themselves, we start off with Teller Knight Lyra. It's a level 4 light warrior with 1200 attack with 1600 defense. It's considered Constellar, that's why you might just call it Constellar Knights at this point. But anyway, its effects are both hard ones per turn, the first one being if a Teller Knight or Constellar monster other than itself is normal summoned to the field, you can special summon this card from your hand. Play extension. And then its second effect is that if this card is summoned, you can add one Teller Knight spell from your deck to your hand. No reason not to run three when this is literally your play extension along with your searcher. Next, Teller Knight Atia. Level 4 Light Warrior with 1700 attack, 1300 defense, treat as Constellar, and both of its effects are hard ones per turn. The first one being if this card is summoned, you can target cards on the field up to the number of light and dark exceed monsters you control and destroy them. This deck is already filled with light monsters, so I don't think we need to worry about that part, but it is nice to have some removal right there. But the second effect, if a Teller Knight and or Constellar monster other than itself is special summoned to your field, you can special summon this card from your graveyard, but it cannot declare an attack for the rest of the turn except with exceed monsters. Not a problem right there, and basically just more play extension, because you can always just send this card to the graveyard for any means, which Constellar Knights have ways to do, and of course special summoning is just more play extension. And because you did that, you're very likely going to trigger the first effect as well. Obviously run this. And now to a new boss monster, Teller Knight Constellar Cadius. Rank 4 Light Spellcaster, Exceed with 2500 attack, 1650 defense, really hate the 50 part, requires 2 or more level 4 monsters. Its effects are both hard ones per turn. The first one is if this card is Exceed Summon, you can target one Teller Knight or Constellar card in your graveyard and add it to your hand. Very nice. Second effect, you can banish one Teller or Constellar monster from your hand or deck, then detach one material from this card, and then this card's effect becomes the banished monster's effect when you perform the normal summon. So basically, Basically, you activate its effect to send one Teller Knight or Constellar, whatever, and basically you activate the effect as it was normal summon. Which of course many Constellar Knights have those type of summon effects, so that isn't much of an issue and based on the previous two cards, well you got some good targets. Overall it isn't too bad. Next, Teller Knight Constellar. It's a continuous spell, and you can only activate one of these per turn, and you can use the second effect as a hard ones per turn. First off, its effect is when this card resolves, you can special summon one Teller or Constellar monster from your hand or graveyard. That's already pretty nice right there. But the second effect is that you can target one Teller or Constellar Exceed monster you control, special summon from your extra deck one Teller or Constellar Exceed monster with a different rank from that monster you control by using it as material, and it's treated as Exceed summon. That's really nice because... Teller Knights have ways to manipulate level, and another thing is, Teller Knights have a thing about focusing on exceed summoning by ranking up or down in a specific way. And being able to do that to your rank 4 to summon your rank 5, and there's that one rank 5 that can summon another monster after that, that is pretty good right there. And that one extra special summon is just a nice bonus, and it's also nice that this is a continuous spell meaning that you can pretty much do this every single turn. I do recommend running this. So that's it for the new Teller Knight support, what do you guys think of it? Honestly, pretty cool, decent cards, Teller Knights has been one of my favorite aesthetics, but I never built the deck, but nonetheless, I do like seeing Teller Knights again. Other than that, that's it for this, and see you all next time.